Well, welcome to the Good Ship Oddity. I think oddity is the appropriate word. She's a, a lovable mongrel and um, she's basically, she's ocean going, but the, the primary concept was to explore the coast, upper reaches, rivers and canals of Europe. So she has to be able to change gear. Um, 32 feet long. It's mainly just for Tracy and I, the grandchildren, but we have a double cabin back there. There's a, a bunk here. We have a cabin forward. She draws under three feet and there's a big steel shoe that runs the whole length of the boat. It's 10 mils. So we can, you know, we're okay on, on, on stones and things. She sits um, on that and is stable. You could have 10 people on the side and she would be all right. But we do have dagger boards because she's so shallow draft and they are structured to also act as legs if we're on uneven ground. So down below, she's very open and simple. As Tracy always says, why would you design something to take you to a, a, a beautiful place and live in a cave down below? Um, these are all double glazed. The boat's fully insulated. So we wanted a boat that can go above the Arctic Circle. We want to go to the Lofoten Islands, down to the heat of the Mediterranean. So the insulation works, um, you know, both in hot and cold environments. We have heating throughout the boat. We're looking for um, a very robust boat. So, I mean, you started with little concepts. We want to go down the Danube into the Black Sea. So I was thinking in my mind, well, what happens if we're in, you know, one of those Eastern Bloc countries, we get trapped by the winter. What do we do? They don't have um, the facilities that we have here. So there's a big towing hitch on that steel plate that runs along the bottom of the boat. We could literally link it up to a tractor, drag her up and um, drag it down the main road with sparks flying everywhere. So it's not necessarily that we're going to do that, but the f that, that's a principle that we use. We wanted something that was um, very reliable, simple. So, you know, li little things like this. The drawers are plastic boxes, which we can pass up and down as, as, as we load. Um, changing gear from ocean going mode to, to more European. So we have a, a, a day fridge here, uh, but underneath the seat there is, is a cold box or freezer. So if we go offshore sailing, we, we, have, a, we have a chest freezer, nice oven, um, tons of stowage. I mean, these lockers under here, you can get into them. They're absolutely vast. Um, she has internal ballast, lots of tankage. We use tech tanks. We, what we wanted to do is this is our last boat. This is a 20 year boat. So we upped everything in terms of quality and the spec. So we've got tech tanks have got bespoke uh, for water. We have 425 liters of water. Back aft um, either side, there are two tanks so we can separate fuel and there's 350 litres of fuel. So what that does is gives the boat lots of endurance. You know, we can go, we're going to measure our trips in months um, rather than weeks. Um, up here, there's a, a, a big double bed and you can see a watertight bulkhead. So there's a watertight bulkhead forward. There's also a watertight bulkhead aft. So again, we wanted a, a, a rugged little boat that'll look after us and uh, and take us through any circumstances. This steel pipe here, you can see is um, the chain, uh, the anchor chain runs down back aft so that all of the weight is down in the bottom of the boat. And the joy of the boat is you can keep watch here. Um, I have uh, uh, a Bluetooth um, uh, remote for the autopilot and um, you know, we can stand down here. So when it's cold and everyone's on deck and miserable, we're in our slippers drinking tea and eating toast. It's actually rather fantastic. Uh, we have a big engine. We went for a Beta 43, which is perhaps bigger than you would normally have on a boat this size, but it's a very simple marinized engine. You know, once it's running, you could disconnect the battery and it will keep going, which is what we wanted. And she will do quite a lot of motoring when we go through the canals in Europe and traps, you know, having to push up rivers like the Rhine. We have a big 18 inch uh, Brunton's autoprop, which they're fantastic. And it, the, the pitch is at its most efficient, whatever the revs. So what that will do is it will pull down the, down the fuel consumption. And um, yeah, it's a nice boat. We, we went, we were in um, 
what was it we had about 25 knots on the nose um, off the lizard very lumpy nasty seas and at uh, 1600 revs we were just punching through it at five and a half knots like we were on a fishing boat down here so she's she's a really nice simple boat so this hatch faces forward which gives us lots of ventilation if it's nice weather this one faces aft so we can open it even if it's raining just silly little things but they all make a difference table lovely table so when we when we design the boat it's it's a little home we can fit 24 <laughs> bottles of wine in the table <laughs> why wouldn't you but um if you look at it there's no navigation area because you to lose all that space dedicated to a nav table which hardly gets used nowadays so this leaf here is much bigger if i do my chart work at night which is basically the passage planning i can use i can use that table and um uh, and if i happen to be working on that this one drops down and you can have access walking uh, backwards and forwards um, we wanted comfort so like i say we have hot air blowers throughout the boat we have hot and cold running water um, we have a bathroom or, or heads here which is again electric um, hot and cold water shower uh, back here is um, you know for more of a long-term cruising boat we have a I guess you, a lot of people call it a man cave or a garage, but I have all my tools and spares and things back there, um, including the black, black water tank. Um, there's lots of volume down below underneath uh, the floorboards because, of course, they've been elevated so that we have the pilot house. So storage is, is we've just got gallons of it. And uh, then over here, we, we have a, a double cabin. So she's a really cool boat. When we designed the boat, we were really worried that the, the centerboard, uh, daggerboard boxes would impinge on the accommodation, but they don't at all. I'm, I'm absolutely delighted. So this is a, the daggerboard box, which of course plunges right through the boat. Um, the daggerboards are wooden. Uh, I can pull them up and down by hand. Uh, they draw six feet when they're down. And what we've done is we've towed the daggerboards in five degrees so that obviously you only use the leeward one and that gives us lift up to windward. And that was what I lost the most sleep over. It was either going to work or it was going to give us a load of drag. But actually it works really well. So she sails. She sails really well. Actually, I've been very pleased. So we have a scow bow. She's 32 feet long. She's 11 feet wide and she carries the beam all the way aft. And um, Chris Reese is the designer and, and builder, so we came up with the concept with him. And once she drops the chine into the water, she then becomes very, very stiff and sits at about 12 and a half degrees. So it's a comfortable angle in terms of living on the boat. So um, basically going from forward aft, as you can see, the scow bow gives a, a, a really lovely working area on the foredeck. Um, we, we upped everything in terms of specs, so we, you know, we have a big anchor, we've got a big Lumar um, windlass. So the boat's quite utilitarian, so all of the metalwork is, is um, galvanised, uh, simple, very strong. You could pretty, pretty much pick the boat up with these cleats. The pulpit's quite interesting, you can see it comes back down to hinges either side of the um, you know, quite close to the, the mast. And this is part of that changing gear from an ocean going boat to a river boat. So what happens is the pulpit becomes an A-frame. We put a block and tackle down here, connect it to the top of the mast, and then ease that out off a winch. And that then becomes an A-frame, which we use to drop the mast. So that's why we have a gaff rig is A, we can drop it with ease, but all of the spars remain within the boat length. And the tabernacle is high enough such that with the mast down and all of the spars stowed, it doesn't impinge on the cockpit at all back aft. So what that means is we're completely independent. Within a couple of hours, Tracy and I can go from an ocean going boat to a canal boat um, motoring under, under low bridges. Because the mast is low, what we have is uh, we've stuck a bowsprit 
one, we have a, um, a code zero on it. And it actually is a big area, but it's, it's very low down. It's a low centre of effort, which gives us a, a nice powerful boat. Everything's simple, everything clean. Coming back after you, you can see the centre boards. So these are um, uh, basically towed in five degrees so that um, obviously you only use the leeward one. What that does is it gives us extra lift to windward. So the boat draws just under three feet, but when the dagger boards are down, they, they draw um, six feet. So she sails really well. I'm very, very pleased, but better than I expected, actually. Um, here you can see the tabernacle. There's the pivot point. Everything's very simple. Um, it's lovely to work on. In terms of, of power, you know, she's a... She's, this is a home that we live on and we, we, we wanted to have abundant power. And the real workhorse is the uh, super wind, uh, uh, wind turbine generator, which is absolutely amazing. I've had one of these before and um, they're very clever, the design. It's, it changes the pitch of the blades to the wind, so they're efficient in, in uh, light airs, but more importantly, it'll keep running in very high winds. And then, of course, we have a, um, a solar panel. So we, you know, fridges, freezers, we've got charge points all over the boat. We never think about power. It's just not a consideration. Um, that arch is uh, structural, so there's, there's nothing prissy about the boat. So if we're in a canal and somebody throws a rope down, we can tie it off onto the arch and we just don't, we just don't worry about it. So, um, yeah, come, come and have a look at the cockpit. The, the cockpit um, is very protected, um, very safe, plenty of room. So we have a dodger, um, we can rig up a bimini, uh, if needs be, sides go onto that. So this then becomes a big room. If we're at anchor for a long period of time and you have bad weather, then uh, you can still utilize this space. We've got really good electronics, all, all Raymarine. Um, uh, we have an autopilot, a tiller arm, uh, engine control here. And it's just this big social, social space. And um, if we're anchored up for a long period, we can remove the... Um, uh, the tiller arm so that then you can walk right through and the transom is actually uh, well it can be a transom it can drop down to a boarding platform and there's cutouts in it that you can drop it into the water and it then becomes a ladder to climb up if you're swimming but also if we dry out it's about that far from the ground so it gives us a boarding ladder as well so big storage in here we've got good lumar winches um, the aft watertight bulkhead runs across here uh, and so what we have is the gas locker in this side um, but the other one is absolutely vast it runs right through underneath you could put four or five people in there and so what that does is gives us loads of storage for fenders and all that kind of paraphernalia um, the outboard can fit onto this this is a big strong structure and is really good for dropping the dinghy in and out. What we found was when cruising is, you, it's, well, this is for us, I know sailing's not a science, but if you have a very simple system to launch and retrieve your dinghy, then you're much more likely to have it up and safe. So if, if there's a problem, you can just bail out. And uh, th this is a really good, good simple system. I'm really pleased with it. Th these are just silly little ideas, but th this is the hatch above the, the heads. And, um, y you know, if, if, we, if we shut the doors in the heads, we have a hot air blower in the bottom, open up the hatch, and basically we have a, um, a drying room. It's absolutely fantastic. In terms of the doors, we've got... Um, uh, a proper door, which can lock to give Tracy security. If we want to vent the boat, um, we, we can, it's just a little thing. I'm really pleased with the doors.
and nice easy access. There's only two steps so you can't fall down below and you just come down to this beautiful, beautiful area. Yeah. Big galley. It's a kitchen, it's not a galley. Isn't it, Trace? 